Hey, Fosu. This is Christy, Salty Stitcher. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, it is Sunday, the, I'm looking at the time, the 27th of February, and this is floss tube number 38. Uh, it's been about three or four weeks since I uh, filmed last, um, and I just returned back from a trip to Australia to see my husband for the first time in uh, nine months, give or take. Um, we had a wonderful trip, uh, did a driving tour of Tasmania, and I got to see uh, where he lived in Alice Springs, uh, which is in the Northern Territory. So um, it was a wonderful time. I had a wonderful time. Uh, we did a lot of hiking, uh, toured uh, some a few wineries in the area, saw a few of the wine regions down in uh, Tasmania. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I, um, it was sad to leave. I can't lie. Uh, happy to be home though. Happy to get back to a bunch of stitching and, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, I'll, I'll show you some of my haul, uh, that I got from Tasmania. Uh, some of it is stitching related and we'll go from there. Uh, so without further ado, um, let's see, I'm going to go with, uh, shop announcements, uh, first off. I know a lot of people are preparing to either go to market or have placed the pre-orders. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to make it to market uh, this year. Um, I have had a military obligation and had to stay local here in California, uh, but maybe next year. Uh, it's on my, on my uh, kind of bucket list, uh, stitching bucket list. Um, however, I do have two new patterns uh, that are available for order, uh, and all you have to do is contact your local needle workshop. And uh, needle workshops, all you have to do is uh, either place an order with me via my email address, uh, which I will put below, um, or uh, you can order through Yarn Tree, uh, who distributes my patterns. So um, I have two uh, new patterns that I showed last week that are available for ordering and um, I will be shipping them out. Uh, the first one is Christmas Claws. Um, this is kind of a pun uh, on uh, the Christmas Island crab migration. Christmas Island is off the northwest coast of uh, Australia and every summer for them, um, the crabs decide to migrate and they go from the forest to the ocean, um, they, I, they breed and spawn and, uh, then the baby crabs hatch and, um, go back into the forest. Uh, this year was a record, record, uh, migration and, um, just a really record event. They've, they've had a few problems with the population lately, but, um, but this year was a particularly good year. Uh, so this just, um, represents... The Christmas crab, Christmas Island crab migration. So you have all the little crabs coming ashore. Uh, the red rocks are represent all of the baby crabs uh, that tend to hatch in the water and then migrate in. Uh, it's about 100 stitches by 100 stitches and it uses um, sulky thread and there's also a DMC conversion. Um, there's also a sulky variegated conversion because I know a lot of people have sulky threads, but they may not have the uh, variegated ones. So um, there's a couple conversions uh, in the pattern. Uh, so this is a real fun one. Uh, really has nothing to do with Christmas, although the timing is similar. Uh, but yeah, so Christmas Claws is available uh, for order through your local needle workshop. And the second pattern is my Hawaiian sea turtle. And I know some, um, some shops have shown this because I sent a few out uh, as gifts. But here is the Hawaiian sea turtle. This is the FFO. And it too is about 100 stitches by 100 stitches. It is stitched in sulky thread. And I was inspired uh, to stitch this when a friend showed me a video while he was diving of uh, this wonderful sea turtle who was going chasing a jellyfish for a snack and and spoiler alert the turtle did go ahead and eat the jellyfish it's a lot of fun 
In uh, one of my previous videos, I think it's two or three ago, I did provide the video of the um, turtle eating the jellyfish. So uh, this is just a really fun stitch. Summer's coming up, so um, uh, really enjoyed stitching this. This also sulky thread uh, with a DMC conversion. Um, I don't have thread packs available just yet uh, for these two patterns, but I am working uh, with sulky and that may might come to fruition here in the um, next month or so, I think. Uh, so those are my two new patterns that are available to order. Now, I'm going to gently put them over here so we can continue. Uh, so those are my shop announcements, uh, and I have two finishes. Um, so as I mentioned, I w went to Australia, and it was about 15 and a half hours in a plane over there, and 13 back with uh, a couple flights in between. Uh, so I was able to work on some of uh, my patterns that were stitched on, I think, 32 count linen. Um, it was really easy to stitch on that particular count um, on the plane. And uh, so I took advantage of that. So the first one is um, called Among Black Cats. Uh, this is a gift from my mother-in-law uh, for her birthday. And as soon as I, we're done talking here, I'm gonna go take it to uh, iron it and take it to the framers. But this was my first finish. My mother-in-law absolutely loves all black cats. Um, I stitched this on 28 count, picture this plus cashel linen. And the color is, uh, I wanna say Sprite. And it's just so much fun. There was just, a, I'm gonna put it up here close. There's just a lot of back stitching. Um, so the pattern, you know, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, uh, but the pattern was um, really good at, at doing, uh, showing where the back stitching was. Uh, so the use of shading, use of back stitching um, really makes this pattern pop. I love how the tail is curled up, covering one eye. Those of you who have, cat, who have cats know that uh, cats kind of like to do that, and then they then when you uh, annoy them, they stare at you. They open that one eye and stare at you. So anyway, so this is Among Black Cats. This was a fun stitch, so I'll get this off. Uh, my mother-in-law's birthday is on March 5th. So I don't know if she's gonna get it in time, depending on how quick my framers are, but, but um, eventually it will show up in Fort Lauderdale for her. So that was my first uh, finish. And I will try and get her get a picture of it when it comes back from the framers and I'll show you, uh, show you the final product then. Um, my second finish, uh, so February. So Garon, Garon Stitchery and the Sunshine Stitchers have a designer focus uh, each month. And uh, February's focus was hands-on design. Um, so I chose this hands-on design. I'm stitching it for my mom. And this hands-on design, it's a, about another 100 by 100 um, uh, stitch, and it's called Refuse to Sink. And it's stitched on a 32 count Fortnite fabric sharp spin. And I think that's a fantastic pattern. A, it's nautical. B, it has buoys in it, and um, at least the last couple of years have been pretty challenging. So as we enter year three um, of the, uh, you know, operating within a pandemic, you know, refuse to sink seems like a uh, pretty good message to stitch. So yeah, that is hands-on design um, a pattern that I got at StitchCon last year at Keepsakes. Uh, and then this is, uh, here's the pattern. I don't intend to stitch it again. Um, so I'd like to offer it as a giveaway. So if you want to stitch, hands-on design, refuse to sink. And it's uh, actually the stitch count is 92 by 60. If you'd like to uh, stitch this, please place in the comments beach. 
we'll just use the big, uh, big letters there. And again, please be 18. Don't put giveaway. Um, just use the word uh, beach in a comment. And uh, during my next video, I will go ahead and select uh, a winner for this, for this giveaway. So those are my finishes. Um, I'm going to take a moment to clear the table here and I will be right back. Okay, so uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is WIPGO. And this is my WIPGO board and it's a little busy, um, but I uh, wanted to uh, show you where, uh, where I am with uh, February's WIPGO, WIPGO. Uh, goals, and then also talk a little bit about March uh, with Go. So in uh, February, the numbers called uh, was, they were five, and let me get my notes, I believe it was five and 17. Uh, so for me, five was uh, We the People, that is my original design. And number 17 was also my original design, was my nautical sampler. And I know this is a little bit hard to see, so I will show you both up close. Um, and my goal for WIPGO is a uh, 1,000 stitches uh, when it is called, or um, if the project can be completed under 1,000 stitches, uh, then the goal is to complete the project. Uh, so first one here is We the People. Uh, this is a little bit on the big side. It's 196 stitches by 134 stitches. Um, on 28 count, it's going to be about 14 inches by uh, 9.6 inches. Should have said stitches. Nine, 196 stitches by 134 stitches. Um, I am uh, stitching this using Classic Color Works, uh, but I do have a DMC conversion. And before, um, before this month, I had finished one, two, three and a half stripes. I'd finished all of the stars and about three stripes. Um, so during, during the trip and over the last couple of days, I finished this white stripe with uh, the wording stitched over one and I've stitched the one, two, three, four, the fifth stripe down there and I've started uh, the sixth stripe. Um, so this lettering is stitched over one. So we have over one stitching in the center of the white stripes and then over two stitching everywhere else. This is a uh, 28 count um, uh, linen. But after a couple comments um, uh, from some people, I also added to the pattern, the new pattern, um, the lettering that is backstitched. So that would make it a little bit more friendly for those who stitch on Ada. Um, so I offer both of those patterns now in the one packet. And if you have purchased uh, this pattern and would like to stitch it on Ada and want to do the lettering in backstitch, vice over one stitching, uh, just shoot me an email and let me know and I can uh, send you that pattern. Um, but here is We the People. I'm, I love how it's turning out. The, the colors are just absolutely amazing. Um, and what I like about this is that there's a lot of block stitching. So this is a, I, lo I love to keep this pattern in my car. Uh, so if I have a spare 15 minutes, spare 20 minutes, I'd like to take it to any appointment that I have to go to, lunch break, it is a great one for, as long as you're not stitching the lettering here, it is a great one for just filling in the block. Very meditative, very nice. And if you stitch it on a 28 count fabric, you really don't need anything else other than maybe your own set of glasses and some, you know, good light. But, but yeah, here is We the People. Um, so this was called and I met my goal. So pretty excited about that. It was a little iffy because I, um, did not bring this to Australia with me. So I had to, um, or I, actually I did bring it and I only stitched on it a little bit towards the end. So I really had to um, push to meet my WIPGO goals this month, but I managed to do that. Uh, the second one 
was my nautical sampler. This is also my own design and these charts have been around the world. So it's, uh, they're kind of beat up at the moment. I'll have to print out a new piece of paper. Um, but nautical sampler, sampler, the clamp for down, uh, this, she's also pretty big. Um, stitch count is 310 stitches by 232. I'm stitching her on uh, 40 count under the sea fabrics, Ein, A-I-N-E. Um, stitching it over two threads and I'm using sulky threads. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. There are 12 colors here in the sampler. Uh, so my goal uh, for this was to uh, get at least a thousand stitches. And um, I like to do the border first. I'm a border kind of gal. Um, I don't necessarily love stitching the border, but I want to make sure I stitch it first and um, and that it meets up. So I don't want to stitch the entire thing only to find out that my border doesn't match up. So um, I like to stitch the border first. So I met my goal of a thousand stitches and I have the anchor up in the top left and the bottom left. And I have the border going down one side and across, across the other. And um, I love how this blue sulky thread is popping on this fabric. It is, see that's a, it's showing up pretty true there. It is, and that's my mark with a fabric pen, so that'll come out, but I just love how it's popping out. So I'm really excited really excited about um, this project. And I'm going to keep working on it uh, and pushing through this because I, I really enjoy stitching it. It's, um, it's, it. it's a lot of fun. Once I get the border done, I'll just be able to, you know, work on one or two motifs at a time, one or two flags at a time. And um, yeah, I just love working on it. So, uh, so that's February Whip Go. Whip Go. Uh, so Jessie Marie uh, does stuff. Uh, she runs the WIPGO Facebook group. She did call the numbers for March. Uh, and for March, they are, I want to get this right, 15 and 21. Uh, so what that means for me, uh, 15 is also one of my original designs. It is Home is Where the Coast Guard Sends You. And 21 is Big Red Ship of Life, and this is Ink Circle's design. So I will show you where I am on those. So Coast Guard Home is the pattern that I mentioned uh, first. That is what it's going to look like. It has uh, nautical flags on it, and it also has a lighthouse. Uh, says home is where the Coast Guard sends you. The nautical flags spell out Semper Paratus, which is the Coast Guard's motto. Stitch count is a 140 stitches by 93. Uh, I am stitching it with sulky threads. And I have not started this pattern yet. I've started the navy one. So I have a similar uh, pattern that says home is where the navy sends you. Um, and I can show you what I've accomplished on that, but I am going to stitch it on the same fabric, which is this beautiful blue and purple and green fabric, which is gorgeous. So this is uh, essentially what it's go going to look like. Uh, and I'm going to stitch it down here on the side of the fabric. So uh, this will be a new start. So I'll continue to work on the Navy one. Home is where the Navy sends you and it has a big anchor in the center. And then I will start home is where the Coast Guard sends you down here. But this is essentially what it's going to look like. It's also on Sulky Thread with the DMC conversion. And it's on this blue fabric. And I, I can't remember the name. Uh, I think I got it from uh, Europe. Right. So that is the first First one, so uh, number 21 for me, like I mentioned, was the Big Red Ship of Life. That is an ink circles design. A lot of you are familiar with this. So there are a couple versions 
um, of this pattern depending on how uh, big you want to go. I think I've decided that I want to stitch the entire fleet. Um, so I want to stitch big red ship, there's a medium version, there's a comparatively small version, and I believe um, uh, Tracy Horner at Ink Circles released uh, a new one uh, during market. Uh, it was available for pre-order, um, which is the small red ship. So I think I'm going to stitch the entire fleet, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it because uh, I think you know by now that I absolutely love pretty much any ink circles pattern. Um, so my goal will be to put about a thousand stitches in this. Um, and this is where I am so far. So I'm working just across the top, top border and I'm stitching this in Silks For You thread. Um, and it's a combination of the red, Silks For You, blue and gold. So um, I'm loving how the colors are popping out on here. So a thousand stitches that probably will get me through the top banner. Uh, and then uh, we'll be able to start moving down to the individual motifs. Um, I am stitching this on a 40 count Zweigart linen and I don't have the name. Um, I don't have the name of this linen, but I did buy a full yard of it. Uh, and I've stitched a few things on it, but hopefully I can um, find the same color again so I can do all of the red ships on the uh, same fabric. Yep, so that is Whipgo. Um, I'm gonna pause the video here for a minute just so I can uh, reorganize the table. Be right back. Okay, so I wanted to chat about a few other uh, whips. Um, that I worked on this month. Uh, so the first one was the snarky and modern uh, cross stitch and embroidery um, stitch along, uh, which is the black work hexagons. Uh, so this is 49 hexagons and one pattern is released, released each week. Uh, over the last, couple weeks. Let's see, I think I have. Oh, I don't have five printed out because I was away, but here is week four. Week six. And these are free, this is a free um, stitch along. So that's why I'm showing you uh, these patterns. And then here is the newest one released today, week seven, which I'll be working on this afternoon. And I am, I should take this out for you. I'm stitching this on uh, 16 count Ada, and this is where I am so far. So um, I have weeks one, two, three, four, five, six done, and I'll be working on week seven, putting it in this hexagon there. I am really loving the stitch along. I had no idea how fun uh, stitching black work uh, could be. Um, so yeah, worked on that. I, I kept up with that uh, even while on on my trip. So we'll continue to work on, on that each Sunday. It's become uh, part of my part of my Sunday routine. And let's see, we'll put that there. And then the let's see, we talked about hands-on design. Ah, my temperature charts. Um, I have two temperature charts uh, that I've been uh, working on. The first one, I won't show the pattern, but it is a apricot polka dot uh, stitch along. I'm trying to see if I have an actual picture. Don't have uh, the actual picture of 
of that one, but each day uh, you start in the middle and each day, start in the middle and each day has a five by five square uh, to stitch. And um, I'm using the temperatures in San Pedro where I live. Um, so you start clock, start in the center and go clockwise just in a five by five block around. Uh, so last night I worked on this and caught up for the month of uh, February. Um, so I'm ending up here. I need to add today, um, but I, you can see while I was gone, so relatively cool temperatures in, in the 60s and 70s. And then um, last week while I was gone, they had, or a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, they had um, some temperatures in the 80s. So I love how this is uh, uh, turning out. And hopefully I can keep up with this and update it. My, my goal is to update it once a week uh, with all of the temperatures. Um, so that's for where I live in San Pedro. And I'm just using the call for um, uh, DMC. And then I'm also doing one for where, where my husband lives. And he lives in Alice Springs. Um, so I chose Stitching Mommy's uh, temperature balloons. Uh, for this one. And, and it's an older one. It's from a couple years back. Um, but the reason I chose this one, Vice, her new one, um, I think EJ from Sunshine Stitchers is working on her new one uh, with butterflies, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you haven't watched their video, I encourage you to um, go off and watch their videos, subscribe. Um, uh, EJ is working on the, temp on the uh, temperature butterflies. Um, but the reason I chose temperature balloons um, is because I charted Uluru uh, or Ayers Rock, whichever you prefer, however you prefer to call it. And um, it is a couple hours outside of Alice Springs. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's also a very sacred site to the Aboriginal people. Um, so I charted this. I'll be visiting Uluru during our, during my next trip to Australia in July. So Pretty excited about that. Uh, so I went ahead and charted Uluru, and then here is Stitching Mommy's temperature balloons. And one of the tours that you can take in that area is a uh, hot air balloon ride. So essentially this, without the name there, um, this is what the pattern is gonna look like. So you have Uluru on the bottom, and then you have the temperature balloons on top. Uh, and I am pretty um, thrilled about this pattern. I think I have, um, I'm deciding on some wording that I may want to put on it um, uh, just to honor the Aboriginal people. Uh, but I haven't quite decided on what that's going to look like or where it's going to go just yet. Uh, so I just caught up on that yesterday. And I'm gonna take this out just to show you. I'm stitching this on a 40 count fabric because it's a fairly um, large pattern. And of course I did not write down the name. But this is where I'm at right now. So, Okay, so we have, move this over. We have Uluru down here, which is, a, which is all full coverage. So I am still working my way across to stitch that. And I've stitched all but one basket and all but two clouds. So here are the baskets. Here are some of the clouds. I have two of them. And then I started stitching the temperatures because I didn't want to get too far behind. So my goal was to get up to this basket, uh, which was the January and February basket, and start stitching the temperatures. And as you can see, down in the Southern Hemisphere, it is summertime. So we're starting off with pretty hot temperatures in, in Alice Springs and um, in the desert. It's hard to see the shading, but there are two reds there. Uh, but these colors, I'm using the Stitching Mommy convert or uh, Stitching Mommy hot 
scale um, for the temperatures. And these represent temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So 104, I think there's um, uh, the second day of the year was 108. Uh, so that was a pretty, pretty hot. Yeah. Oh, there. You might be able to see kind of the shading. So this is day one through four, and day two was a little warmer than the others. So I'm pretty excited about how this is coming out and trying to figure out where to put some badging, wording, um, just to honor uh, the Aboriginal people and acknowledge that we are living and playing on their land. Um, and uh, yeah, just to acknowledge that and also um, show how grateful we are to be able to do that on a daily basis. So uh, the temperature chart, I'm pretty excited about that. Those are a lot of fun to stitch and I've been um, keeping up with them uh, pretty well. So uh, I'm going to take a break there. Those are all of the whips uh, that I worked on. Um, and I'm going to clean this up and shift over into my cherry of the month and some plans. So let's see. Let's pause for a second. Okay, so just to do a quick re recap, here is my book of days. Um, I have all of the projects that I worked on or wanted to work on. Um, printed out using my HP sprocket and their positions um, along the edges here. And then I have all of my temperatures uh, listed for February and my goals for the um, goals for the month. I haven't um, put really anything in the actual boxes. I'm still figuring this out. Um, uh, but this is helping helping me track. Um, oh, here's a good picture. Oh, we'll go back to the temperature. Yeah, so that's the apricot polka dot uh, temperature piece. That's ultimately what it'll look like. Um, so I'm still working through uh, catching up on February's notes, and I still need to do March's notes. I've got just a blank blank page here with some plans. Um, uh, but the first plan I wanted to mention, so we already talked about WIPCO. Um, so I'll be working through those goals for March. Uh, I also plan to um, continue stitching my StitchCon small. I'll be heading to StitchCon weekend B, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, the Garon Stitchery, uh, uh, designer of the month for the month of March is Rosewood Manor. Uh, so the one Rosewood Manor chart that I am working on is Anchors of the Kingdom. And I am, I am almost done with this. I am stitching it on a, oh, I think this is a 28 or 32 count opalescent uh, fabric and I think I was waiting on uh, some more thread, but this is where I am so far. And I am almost done. So, so yeah, I will be working on this during the month of um, during the month of March uh, during the Rosewood Manor Designer Focus, and I'll let you know. Uh, how far I get on it. Um, I don't have any particular goals uh, for the designer focus other than to pull it out and actually um, put some stitches in it and make some headway. So, um, so yeah, so Anchors of the Kingdom will fill that role. I'm gonna work on the my temperature charts again, and I'm gonna try uh, for the month, month of March to put some stitches in the lions. Um, that is the one goal I did not meet, the full coverage fanatics um, stitching around the world. I did not get to work on the lions at all, even though I brought it with me um, to Australia. It was just too in intricate and we had too many moving parts during our trip. Um, so that was not something that was a great travel piece uh, for me. Um, but those are my plans uh, and 
I also plan to do uh, another floss tube in about two weeks. So hopefully we can get back on a, a one to two week uh, schedule. I don't have any travel for, for March, so um, should be able to pull that off. Um, I do have some haul uh, that I wanted to show you. I have about a month's worth of haul. So I'm only gonna show you the highlights. Um, uh, first thing I wanted to highlight was uh, I went to, while I was down in Hobart, my husband and I spent uh, two days in Hobart, um, went to visit uh, Carolyn at A Stitch in Time. And I actually needed to pick up a, a, another stain of Weeks Dye Works. Uh, it's not, not showing up too terribly well, uh, but Carolyn was um, uh, very delightful, has a lovely shop down there, and I was so thankful that there was a stitching shop all the way down at the end of the world to uh, be able to go in and get some floss uh, that I needed to finish the hands-on design, um, hands-on design project. Uh, I also went to a fabric store uh, called Aboriginal Fabric Gallery, and this was in um, in Alice Springs. I've ordered from them before to get Ann Judy um, some fabric for her quilting. And while I was there, I was able to pick up uh, some Aboriginal fabric uh, that I plan to put together some bags. And then also I picked up a pattern to, to make an Aboriginal quilt. Um, so I'm pretty excited. So this is an assortment of uh, fat quarters, I wanna say. Yeah, fat quarters. I don't think I, I will ever stitch on these fat quarters because it's it's actual fabric. Um, but here's the blue, and then there's red, and kind of a purple, blue, and yellow. And I also picked up a book, uh, The Beginner's Guide to Australian Aboriginal Art, the symbols, their meanings, uh, and some stories. Uh, and this was a nice little pamphlet um, that just goes through kind of what, what, what this means. Um, so every trip for me is an opportunity to learn about the culture uh, and get immersed in the culture and so understanding what the Aboriginal art actually means and what I'm looking at is important to me. Um, so yeah, so got that. So I'm excited to open that up. And then I also, if I make a few bags out of these, I thought these would make really cute scissor pulls. Um, so I've got these little boomerangs with different, different colors and different symbols. So yeah, so a lot of fun there. Uh, while I was gone, I did order a few new bags and they came in while I was away. And this is uh, so much to love bags. So the first one are the kitties kind of marching down the street. It's so cute on the back here. One's actually laying in a little a little beach chair. So that was cool. And then um, this one came in. This is nautical, nautical theme, seashells, turtles. And you know I'm in for that. And then because July's coming coming up, I have a patriotic one. Red, white, and blue. Uh, so those are fun. I'm gonna put those in into uh, Good use, and then I also picked up uh, some fabrics and some thread, so, or uh, some patterns and some thread. Uh, so the first one, this is the comparatively small Red Ship of Life. I'm just adding to the Red Ship collection, the fleet. And um, I did order a DMC color card, and uh, those of you who are designers, um, know that these color cards are just invaluable when you're trying to uh, pick colors and pick shades, do some shading. And while the paper color card was serving me really well, um, I really wanted to upgrade to the color card that actually has the thread in it. 
and um, uh, it might be hard to see on the video, but it's actually the thread vice just a printed out printed out card. So this is really helpful when you're trying to uh, choose pattern colors, maybe even do conversions. It has all of the DMC thread. And then it also has the different types of DMC thread and will tell you which colors come in which type of DMC thread. So over here's some of the shinier. Uh, they also have the variegated ones. Um, yeah, so this was, uh, this came in the mail. Um, and pretty excited uh, to have this as a resource uh, for me. And then finally, uh, I will stop here um, because July is coming up and I plan to start uh, a few patriotic uh, stitches. I did place an order at uh, for Silks for You. So I wanna pull these out of the bag because the bag is not doing them any favors here. So the first one, I got a couple hanks of silk. Uh, the first one is white. So a hank of white, white silk. And then uh, PR 126, which I thought was a gorgeous variegated red. You can see sort of the variegation there. And PR 168, which is an absolutely gorgeous blue. Yeah, so um, I love having these colors uh, on hand to stitch anything uh, patriotic. And I do have a July rather a start, patriotic start um, that I am going to probably start around June. And um, I mentioned it in some earlier videos, but I'll save, uh, save it for a little later. But these are the colors I plan to use uh, for probably any patriotic stitching. And, and they're absolutely gorgeous. So thank you so much to Silks for You. Um, I love ordering from them and uh, love supporting supporting their shop. Uh, and I think I'm just checking my notes. Oh, Charity of the Month. Um, so last, uh, last month's Charity of the Month was American Humane. Uh, I made a donation uh, to them. So thank you so much to everyone who purchased uh, my patterns or made a donation uh, to me. Any any donation or any purchase um, of a pattern, a portion of that goes to my charity of the month. Um, and March's charity of the month, I have not decided on which one uh, that is gonna be yet. So that uh, I'll announce that in my next, my next video. And I think, I think that is it. Remember, if you want uh, to stitch the hands-on design, refuse to sync, uh, go ahead and mention in the comments uh, the word beach. And um, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe uh, to my video. Um, I also have a buy me a coffee link uh, down in the description. If I enabled you, if you enjoyed what you're seeing, um, the uh, buy me a coffee link is there. You're under no obligation, obviously, uh, to donate. But if you feel the need, it is there for you. And all the proceeds go back into the um, supporting this channel and supporting the business. So anyway, I plan to see you in about two weeks. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for liking and subscribing and uh, happy stitching. Bye everyone.